if you think about what drives economic growth, there are two fundamental aspects. There's growth in the labor force and productivity. And what demographics is impacting is the labor force side of the equation. As more and more people are exiting the labor force and retiring, that's the growth in the over 65 population, that lessens or decreases the size of that labor force. In addition, millennials or, or uh, school age individuals are actually staying in school longer. So on both ends, you're seeing sort of a slowing of, of growth in that core working age population, and that then constrains overall economic growth. Europe is certainly the oldest economy and has been the oldest economy for um, some time. As that dependency ratio rises, so larger population of baby boomers, smaller population in the working age, there's a shift in sort of funding from the working age population to baby boomers. So I think we should expect to see more of that in other, in other um, countries. But in addition, that creates sort of an intergenerational conflict, right? Because you have this retired baby boomer population that potentially is putting a strain on this shrinking working age population, particularly in Europe, in countries like Germany, uh, for example. If the sum total of a government budget is now going to be differentially focused on pensions and social security and health care versus potentially programs that would support uh, the working age or younger populations. Japan actually has a contracting workforce and has had that for some time. So that has caused stagnation in Japan. And because it hasn't benefited as much from immigration, that really is a significant drag. So for Japan to improve economic growth, it really has to invest in productivity. On the other hand, you have countries like Mexico, where productivity may not be as high, but they have the benefit of high fertility rates of a growing working age population. While the US is also experiencing the aging of the baby boomer and this aging population, we benefit from the coming of age of a very large and diverse millennial population. And that's driven by the fact that a, a significant portion of the millennial population, I think it's about a third, are represented by Hispanics who have above average uh, fertility rates and are therefore contributing to growth in the working age population. In the US, we expect a bit of a hockey stick where the potential for economic growth may slow for some time, but we do expect a tick up driven by millennials coming of age. Certainly the below average wage growth that we've seen in millennials could down the line become an issue. But for right now, they are set up to benefit um, from the huge baby boomer wealth that has been accumulated. The U.S. would not have been able to sustain the levels of economic growth that we have without immigrants, without this foreign born population. Um, that said, we also have to think about our native-born workers and the impact that foreign-born workers may have on that. So it's a complicated issue. And if we, on both sides of the aisle, could acknowledge the complexity, I think we could go a long way to actually solving the, the problem. I'm very bullish on infrastructure. One of the topics we haven't talked about is how these demographic trends are going to fuel continued urbanization, the urban footprint to support that growing population is going to need to increase. And unfortunately, governments' budgets are constrained, so they're not able to fund a lot of this. So as investors, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity for private capital to find very profitable investments related to infrastructure. Every single dimension, housing is going to have to change. Every single dimension of that urban footprint is going to require investment. And, and in many cases, these great cities that we have in the world world, especially in places like New York, are sort of overdue for that type of investment. So basic roads, right, um, are, are going to be areas of focus.